Welcome to the Davis and Shatliff Irrigation Podcast, Episode 1. Here, we discuss innovative ways of farming and technologies that farmers in this country and in the entire continent are using to mitigate against the effects of climate change. I'm Caleb Karoga, I'm the brand ambassador for Davis and Shatliff and the host of this amazing episode. Now, before you continue, do me a favor. Subscribe to the Davis and Shatley YouTube channel right now. Why? You don't want to miss what's coming up next. Now, with me here, I have one boy, but I want you to introduce yourself the best way you know how to. Uh, thank you, Caleb. Um, my name is Stephen Wambua um, from Davis and Shatliff. I am in charge of the irrigation segment in the group. Um, as you are aware, we have a number of segments within the company and we sell quite a wide range of products. And so irrigation is one of the um, segments. Relatively new, uh, but um, growing very um, at a very fast rate. All right. Now, in the interest of gender equity, we have a lady with us. Now, I have seen her on TikTok. Rather, I have seen her hand on TikTok. I have seen her talking about irrigation and how she has struggled to really get it right in terms of irrigation. So I want to introduce her, or she introduces herself to us. Tafadali Karibuni, or Karibu Mukami. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mukami. I'm a farmer and I share my journey, or I have been sharing my journey on TikTok with everybody else and just uh, going through the motions and sharing everything that I do. Thank you. Mokami, let's kick start this podcast by discussing how was your journey in farming? What did you start with? Uh, did you start with irrigation first or were you just depending on rainfall and agriculture? How was your first uh, time in farming? Okay, when I started farming, I had um, hose pipes, yeah, and uh, set them up, had uh, various uh, lengths of hose pipes, then I uh, went uh, to, to the agrovet, went and bought uh, seeds. So. Now, because you don't know some of these things, as in uh, nobody's teaching you and you're learning on the job, I went and I bought like uh, 25 grams of uh, spinach and 25 grams of uh, kale. Yeah, put them in the nursery, started watering them. And uh, yeah, by the time it was getting to the point where we needed to transplant them, <laughs> somebody eventually told me that uh, 25 grams of uh, spinach or 25 grams of kale is required over about a quarter acre. And I'm like, my God, how am I going to irrigate a quarter acre with a hose pipe? Uh -huh. Yeah, and this at this point, it was, it was already starting to get uh, much warmer yeah. in the year. So, you start to irrigate with a, with a hose pipe, and the uh, hose pipe, Kama Kawaida, will always kink. Always. I saw the worst time mm -hmm. ever, mm -hmm. it will always kink. Mm -hmm. So, always kink. 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 So the frustration and the stress, mm -hmm. I just um, kept on uh, doing that. So how were you doing? Don't rush it. How are you doing this? So it would kink to Jikunja, mm -hmm. so you'd stop irrigating and look for where... Yeah, you look for where it's kinked. Eh? You're using a 50 meter hose pipe. Wow. A 50 meter hose pipe. It's that side. Mm -hmm. You're at that end. Yeah. So. Because of the, um, and I had a pressure pump, so it kinks, it uh, detaches from uh, where the pipe is joined, so you have to either choose, do I go turn off the pump, do I go uh, get wet uh, fixing this thing, mm -hmm. or do I stop watering completely? So it's, it's, it's been a journey and it has been, it has been a journey of, you say that uh, you will wake up uh, because it is so hot during the day, and the best time if you're doing um, any irrigation, especially with hose pipes or with um, with power irrigation, the best time to water is um, in the morning. So, imagine you're doing the hose pipe, the amount of water that you get is not as much like uh, the, the bigger pipes. Mm -hmm. So you're waking up at uh, 5 in the morning so that you're done by 9 a.m. Wait, you're waking up at 5? Yeah, to start watering. Yeah. So do you have like a torch or something? What are you, because you can't see at 5 a.m. You have your phone. No way. 
It is not something that doesn't happen. It happens to so many mm -hmm. people, and uh, this is what is. This is how we are farming. This is how we are farming. This is how we are making a living. Do you know? I feel, and I'm going to come to Ambua. Back in the day, before I got a drink, it, uh, water will be uh, the, the ration of water. So we get water sometimes at around 11 p.m. when people yes. are going to sleep. Yes. So I will drive to the farm. And literally with a torch and a horse pipe, I feel it. I would sit on a stool, because now you're tired, and my height, <laughs> six foot six inches tall, I have to sit and irrigate my crops at, this, at night when people are asleep. Yeah. How does this make you feel, as an irrigation expert, how farmers are having to struggle with a horse pipe early morning or even late at night? Uh, honestly, I feel the frustration, and I know it's... Um, it's it's the most one of the most efficient ways you can you can water your plants, you know, handling a horse pipe um, in any weather, you know, you, you, you get yourself you know wet, unnecessarily wet, and um, end of the day, you don't do a good job um, when it comes to uniformity in watering your plants. You're very likely to leave dry patches along your your, your field, and you, your your plants don't um, get to grow uniformly. Um, I know it's also very, very wasteful in terms of water usage. Mm -hmm. and of course, you splashing water on the leaves and you spreading disease and uh, all sorts of other problems mm -hmm. when you're using uh, horse pipes. So it is frustrating. I feel your frustration. I feel your pain. <laughs> yeah, one, of, one of the things that uh, I did, and when you're seeing the splashing of water on the on the plants, eh? yes. one of the things that I lost, and uh, because of the lack of uh, uniformity in watering is ho ho. Uh, uh, no bell yeah, bell pepper. Yeah. As in, uh, if you don't water them uh, uniformly, there's, there's so much that goes wrong. Yeah. That's right. And not because that in your you're watering at uh, five, six in the morning, you're still half asleep. Mm. That's right. And then you do that the challenges if you have an employee or employees, you tell them to go and irrigate using a horse pipe, they will wet the ground, but the the water didn't go inside. They the don't just get the water into the roots. So yeah. exactly, you don't want it. Because I would go and find my land looks wet. It was good. It was irrigated. But until you put your finger inside, like nah, 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 this water didn't even go inside. Mm -hmm. So how was it? For what? What point did you say? You know what? I've had it. Mukami, what was this? When was this day? And and, and what was like? I cannot do this thing anymore. What triggered that? You said I'm gonna go drink. For me, I think it was the loss of the, the capsicum. Mm. The loss of the capsicum was just that was just that was just the it for me because we lost because of first soil bone diseases, inadequate uh, watering, um, and it's it all it all comes back to to water. As in, you've watered everywhere else, and then you don't have enough water for for this section, and this is your money maker. Mm. So you're like, ah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Mm. Yeah. So, so you got your drip kit from where? You were telling me before, where did you get it from? Now, this is Kenya, Kadogo uh -huh. economy. What do you mean by Yakupima? Like for audiences, oh. those of us don't understand that. What do you mean? For those who don't get it, eh? Yakupima it means that eh, you take small bits, but it costs. So, so you collect your vendor. Um, they cut for you a small drip kit? Yeah, they, they cut for you. Come on, Ataka, if you want 10 meters, mm -hmm. you get 10 meters. Mm -hmm. If your bed is 30 meters, you can them, you can take 30 meters, uh, mara, yeah? Mm -hmm. So you do the counting. So you do that, eh? This is then, because, then because uh, you, don't have, uh, you don't have all the money at the time, eh? Mm -hmm. There's some just small, small things that uh, you, don't, you don't put in place, so I didn't put end caps. So I went on YouTube. How do you make how do you make end caps? So I have a video on on my TikTok showing you how you can do an, an end cap. An end cap is fifteen bob. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Things are thick, Mona. You've been sunk by your crops not doing well. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you going to start spending fifteen bob times? Do you know I'm laughing at you? Uh, when I got the concept of drip irrigation, I went all the way to Naivasha. Because I was told they are cheaper drip kits from uh, those flower farms there. And I bought, I don't know how many meters I bought, but it was for about a naked half. 
<laughs> when we were laying the drip planes, some of them were cut, some emitters were clogged. Because uh, I was trying to say, man, what, what did you tell someone who is going there? Cheap route. Because, well, we want to save a coin here. Yeah. It's cheap. Expensive at the end of the day. Cheap is always expensive. And uh, I'll tell you, the biggest risk you buy in second hand drip line is you're buying, of course, discarded. Or you're buying a um, drip line that you cannot ascertain where it came from. Come to those also problems and challenges. You just mentioned half the emitters are clogged. You don't know the quality of the water that they were using before. So you will very likely to be working with um, half-life or even less of the expected lifespan of your drip line because um, um, half of the emitters are clogged. Um, you got it torn, it's, it's leaking all over and then you need a lot of repair works to get it working properly. But, but I, I would say from my experience, um, you know, the worst, um, the biggest problem that I've encountered is, uh, you know, um, drip line comes contaminated especially if you used it with recycled water. Um, nematodes, for instance, which are very prevalent in soils. Can you say that again? Really look at the camera and say that again. Yeah. My goodness, say that again. I would say one of the biggest challenges that comes with uh, using the recycled drip line is contamination. Um, I've seen um, entire large tracts of land um, abandoned because of infestation, infestation from nematodes. Nematodes are really, really difficult to eliminate from your field. And if you buy a contaminated drip line that has got nematode and stroke, transfer that into your farm, then you've just brought yourself a problem and a challenge that you are never going to overcome, and which can be very costly, can actually cost you your venture. So contamination in drip lines is real, and this is something I really would want to caution against. So always go for quality. That explains uh, a lot. Yeah. That <laughs> so when you come in, you talk about the Kandogo economy, um, it, it's quite, you know, it records with a small scale farm at the beginner. But um, you need to look at the costs, uh, benefits going forward, and the damage you're going to cause to venture um, in the near future, in the short term, actually. Because when it comes to contamination, when it comes to the cost of repairs, um, you realize cheap, end of the day, gets to very expensive, not just expensive. How long did that Kadogo thing last you? Kadogo is still working. Okay. Wow. Yes, uh, but uh, Kadogo got cut up because of uh, me and harvesting cabbages because we didn't know that uh, you can remove your <laughs> you can remove your your, your drip lines mm -hmm. and then uh, harvest your cabbage. We didn't know that, mm -hmm. so we learned. But anyway, after that, um, I got a professional. Yeah, you look for professionals to to get you to the right to the right point. Tell me what kind of uh, drips you require, what kind of piping you require, how to actually lay out your farm in terms of water. Yeah, and how you can actually even expand it. Yeah, just by doing the right the right way. So, what did you tell someone who was saying it's too ex drip expensive, drip kits or whatever? It's too expensive to install. Like, it's for those other people. It's expensive. What would you tell them? I <laughs> watch <your> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell them. Eh? Mm. Yes, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's not within reach for sometimes everyone. But if you start save up and you know put all your money together, or if you guys can also come up with ways that we can be able to get some of this, yeah, in a more affordable way, yeah, then it will make it available for everyone but I will tell you it is bliss having a functioning system. Talking about bliss, how was it, how did it make you feel when the drip kit was installed and the first few drops were dropping and you saw your crops? Oh, how did it make you feel? Let me tell you something, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. That it is so mesmerizing watching the water dripping. Mm -hmm. I think I have videos over videos of just watching water dripping. It's, and especially like in the evening, sunset, and you're standing at an angle with the sun on the horizon, mm -hmm. and you're watching, it is mesmerizing. You can't, I can't explain, but it is beautiful, it is amazing, it is uh, stress relieving, mm -hmm. so. When you, when you hear her talk like that, yeah, um, yeah. 
and you sit in the office and you hear people saying it's expensive. Uh, is it that the people think you must start with what they have, have 10 acres, so I must drink the 10 acres, I have two acres, so oh my goodness, I don't have the money for the two acres. What would be your advice? How can someone start? Well, one of the best uh, advantages of using drip irrigation is it, it is quite scalable. You, you can start from a very small plot, a sixteenth of an acre, an eighth, you know, a quarter, or any size. And then with time you scale it up to, you know, larger, larger areas. So that's, that's one of the big advantages with drip. You can actually scale it up. Um, in terms of our offering, um, we've made it even more affordable. We've introduced more uh, products within our range. We've got, um, we've got a system and um, um, a, a new way to make farmers access uh, these products more affordably. Irrigation, solar, you know, pumps and everything else. We call the PAYGO. PAYGO is a new method that we've introduced so that farmers can slowly uh, pay for this product. And this makes it more affordable to every farmer at whatever scale you start. So, poly. Yes, Nipa poly poly. Mm -hmm. So we made it now available to farmers. It's a very new product. Uh, farmers should really take advantage of that. Um, sorry about your predicament. <laughs> you know when you're beginning. I wish you knew about it. I wish you had a pay go. You know we would have made it so easy for you. Yeah. But now it's there in the market, and uh, we, you know farmers are happy coming, and uh, they are able to start off on a very small scale, and you know they have a Nipa poly poly, and uh, with time. Um, everything is achievable. Tell you what, huh? and hope you guys are subscribing to this channel. Very, very rich in content. Um, there's a time I had some piece of land in uh, Lemur, a place called Kamandoa. And there's a tea zone. Uh, there's a place where they're doing tea. So there's like a small pond sort of hard water. I had to pump water using your pump mm -hmm. for 300 and something meters upstream. And I was irrigating spinach and sukuma wiki. Of course, uh, with those big uh, horse pipes. Those, mm. I don't know how many flexible. flexible pipes, those ones, yes. Uh -huh. ah, my spinach had black spots. And it was during the dry season. My spinach was looking bad. When you go to market, they have mud, they have doodles, they have all that. What, are, what change have you seen in terms of even the end product? How does it look like whether you're doing coriander, jitania, or you're doing spinach, or you're doing cabbages? Previously, you're doing a horse pipe, and now you're doing a grip. Has there been any, any difference? Oh, my friend, the change is massive. It's night and day. Mm -hmm. You have cleaner products. You have the ability to know how many of each you get. You have uniform growth. Okay, fine, not uniform growth generally, mm -hmm. yeah? I have uh, the ladies from the market who put that in a hot cake. <laughs> in a hot cake. In a hot cake. You know? Because they are, they are happy to purchase this product. Because it looks clean. It looks really nice. The farm is even neat. Yeah? Because you can you can tell from a distance away. Yeah? And I have people who come and they'll just uh, they'll stop and they and they'll just stand by the road. Just to admire. Just to admire. Just to admire. Yeah, and especially when, like now there's uh, there's no rain, and it's it's getting brown, and this is a place that is 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 nice and green. And then it's a, a variation of greens because cabbages and uh, and uh, and and dania don't look the same. The the green yes. spinach are different. Mm -hmm. Then you have a uh, purple cabbage. You know that that contrast. Mm -hmm. So guys are like, this is paradise. Can we just come? Yeah. And you farm in a dry place. Yeah. Tell me, how does it make you feel now as a lady in agriculture, in, in farming this space? Because people look at farming and say, mm, it's tedious work. Uh, this is backbreaking. I mean, it was backbreaking for you waking up at five a.m. to irrigate your crop with that horse pipe. Mm -hmm. How does it make you feel as a woman now having it easier? Uh, to irrigate your crop? Does it give you more time to do other chores you could have done? Uh, do you feel there's no more money in your pocket? What, what happens is, yes, you get more time. And more time means that uh, you plan further ahead. Yeah? 
because you, you can't come from a waking up like a five or four in the morning yeah you've had at least a cup of tea and then you're out the door to be out the door by, by five come back um and then you finish watering there's still other things that you have to do you, there's still land prep you have to you have to add manure, you have to um, weed, you have to do other things. By the time you're getting to lunchtime or by the time you're getting out of the farm, you're just exhausted. You have no time to mentally decompress and start thinking about other things. Yeah. So this allows you that time eh? because in between you watering bed to bed, it gives you time to look at your crops, just uh, do your, your normal walks. It allows you time to say, okay, fine. So when this crop comes to its end, what is coming up next? It allows you to plan. It actually allows you to plan, yeah? So by end of the day, yes, you still have those other functional jobs that you need to do, but you're not that exhausted to a point where you can't take time to do more research, you can't take time to, to plan out what's coming up next. So now it, you, you're one, one step ahead of anybody who's doing who's doing a, just a furrow irrigation, because it is exhausting. It is, I can only imagine. Mwalimu Haesabu alisema, to end in Bali. Sasa, Ms. Mwalimu Haesabu, Mwalimu Haesabu, tell us, in terms of plant population, this, I, I watched your video um, a, couple of, a couple of months ago on the BBC Shackley YouTube channel. You're talking about how a farmer can tell how many crops they have on a quarter of an acre. Uh, please do some quick math for us in terms of if I wanted to do cabbages on a quarter of an acre, what spacing would I need and what's the plant population on have and what is the expected uh, revenue from that say good let's talk just a quarter of an acre and feel free to check and tell me whether they've done cabbages and what were the numbers like? Do you want to watch I want them to to have a visual image of have a quarter of an acre. Yeah. I don't want to lose the plot, pun intended. So what am I going to do with this? How much can I invest in uh -huh. what the plant population I'm going to have and what do I get? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, great. I think, um, first of all, because your drip line is laid out in, very, um, reg in a very regular pattern, mm -hmm. you know how many meters of drip you've got okay. and uh, you know how many, me uh, how many beds you have in that section. So if you're talking about a quarter acre with uniformly laid out drip, your spacing for cabbage would probably be 60 centimeters. Um, so we're talking of, um, you know, it depends on varieties. Some varieties grow bigger. We've got Gloria, I don't know what else, and so many other varieties. But uh, most farmers will do between 40 and 60. So let's take 50. Mm -hmm. um, centimeters. 50 centimeters between yeah. rows and 50 centimeters between plants. So okay. along the same drip line. So mm -hmm. you have it uniformly set out. Uh, you do drip lines on a 32 by 32, that means you've got to have about um, 60 lines of, uh, 60 rows of cabbage. Mm -hmm. And um, the count along one row would be another 60. Mm -hmm. So that's approximately 3,600. Um, check out the losses, uh, you get about, say, 3,000. Heads of cabbage. Yeah, heads of cabbage. Mm -hmm. um, and that grows over how many days, 90, 100 days? Um, I do, um, after transplant, we do about three months, about two three and a half months. months. Two and a half months, say 75 to 90 days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's um, 3,000 um, heads of cabbage. What's the average weight? Two kilo? Um, um, yeah. Average weight is about uh, 3.5, uh, 3.7. Okay, yeah, great. Um, for, for 50 centimeter spacing or 60? Uh, 60. Something like that. 60. Yeah, 60. 60. Yeah. So we say we, got, we, we probably have about 3,000 uh, heads, mm -hmm. nice big heads after say 100 days yeah. and that takes us to the, 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 the farm get price. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much you sell per year. Um, yes, you can say 15. 15, 10, 15, 15. Bob. So that would be 30 bob a head. Mm -hmm. um, you got 3,000 of them. Mm -hmm. So it's about 90,000 shillings and that's a quarter acre. Mm -hmm. Um, well, of course, farmers need to be careful. You need to turn the seasons because it's not every time you'll fetch a good price in the market. Mm -hmm. And again, you need to have a variety of crops. You mm -hmm. can't just do one crop and uh, because, because of the seasons, again, prices fluctuate for the same uh, crop. I've seen a lot of farmers, um, you know, rotating that with uh, cereals, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, dried beans. Mm -hmm. 
if you get dry, pin, dry beans on, on, on drip, you, you get a very nice fat uh, bean seed at the end of the harvest. And that's quite, um, that fetch is quite some good price because it's heavy, it's weighty. So that's that's demand. Um, so, so how much does this quarter drip kit cost me? And if I spread it, say, over four, five, six, six months, when do I recoup my money? So cost of drip kit quarter and when do I recoup? Okay, um, first of all, I, let, me, let, me say, let me put it this way. Um, we will not talk about um, how long it will take to recoup your money because uh, different farmers will have um, you know, different challenges depending on relocation, mm -hmm. depending on um, what your input. Some, some people will put in more than others. Mm -hmm. So um, let's just say, um, having um, harvested 90,000 mm -hmm. from one season, mm -hmm. You've got other inputs. You've got labor. You've got uh, seeds and fertilizers, and uh, even the cost of water, yeah. um, and, and so many other inputs. So uh, I will leave that to you to estimate. Mm -hmm. But the cost of a quarter acre drip kit uh, will not go more, uh, you know, upward of sixty or sixty, mm -hmm. sixty-three thousand or sixty thousand, something like that, between fifty and sixty thousand. That's the cost of the irrigation equipment. So the same in the year it will be very Kenyan say within the year it will you will be making profit. It will be making profit. Yeah. If, if you are really aggressive, mm. uh, of course, um, lots of farmers with that kind of planting program will do three seasons in a year. Mm. Some mm. will do two and a half seasons, so the third season crosses over into the next year. Mm. But yeah, within that one year, mm. you you surely should have recovered your money. Mm. Yeah, uh, I will come to you uh, previously. You are doing uh, irrigations in a horse mm -hmm. You are not raising your beds. I don't know that you are telling us whether you are or are not. What's the implication of raised beds? And first, what's a bed? And what is a bed? Ah. And, and, and have you seen any difference in terms of even um, water going to the root system nicely when you raise beds or not? First, what's a bed? What's a bed? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just where, where you, you, you set up and actually what you're supposed to have in the middle of your, your bed is where you put in your, your compost or your, or, your, um, or your manure and compost and manure are two different things. I think I learned. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you learn on the job anyway. Yeah. So you put your compost in the middle and then uh, you cover it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that now creates your, your raised bed. Mm -hmm. And now that allows for your soil to be amended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and to, be, to have all the nutrients that it requires. And it allows for the water to now get in mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, before. You're not doing raised beds, you're doing, you're doing something. Flat ground. Yeah. Flat ground with a hole. Your, uh, your crop inside and then uh, pour out on it. But now with the raised bed and understanding this, mm -hmm. is now you get um, more nutrients into the crop. Mm -hmm. And now because the, the water is specific to the root, yeah, mm -hmm. the plant is able to take up or absorb the nutrients mm -hmm. as it requires. Yeah? Without being forced to mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Beds never <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, beds are basically a raised uh, formation of the planting, you know, section. Um, so we raise the bed, and that forms the planting uh, area. And then you got a, a depressed path. Uh, path. Some farmers make um, narrower, say thirty or forty or fifty, depending on the crop. Um, there's no uniform width for beds actually. Mm -hmm. But what we um, aim to achieve is uh, optimize the plant population when you're making the beds, when you're raising the beds. One of the biggest advantages of beds is um, it, it, it enhances drainage. You know, some plants are really sensitive to, you know, to, to root rot, to literally lose a, lose a crop. Mm -hmm. So you need them on um, a raised bed so that there is um, enhanced drainage. And again, it becomes easy to administer, you know, mechanical or uh, farm operations. Mm -hmm on you know raised beds and yeah and then specifically you're irrigating only very narrow sections remember with drip irrigation we apply water right at the crop base so we just water it where it is needed mm -hmm. and leaving out the walkways and the other areas that don't need to be watered mm -hmm. talking about irrigation now there's someone who's watching us and they're saying okay i am not a farmer but i bought this canes plot 
and I'm doing alone. You know, Nyasi akukulia kideri pale nje. Yes, yes. All right. I want to irrigate my lawn, or I want to irrigate my wheat or uh, barley, whatever it is, mm. and I want to go large scale. Are there other types? What are the other types of irrigation systems? That exist and are available at the Sashaki, and mm. what would you advise them? Because it's not all about drip. Yeah, and I'm assuming you have other types of irrigation. Correct, correct. Right. Yeah. So we've got, um, today we are just talking about drip line, mm. but we, we've got tens of other irrigation systems mm. that um, are applicable to other different uh, forms of crops. So drip line is the most widely used um, by lots of farmers, and by drip, we're just not talking about. The perforated uh, drip tube with emitters uniformly spaced. There are other forms of drip irrigation. Uh, there are button emitters for orchards, um, you know, wide spaced trees, which you install at the base of every plant yourself, mm -hmm. and which is adjustable. You can regulate the flow of water. It's button emitters. Mm -hmm. We've got under tree sprinklers. We've got overhead sprinklers. Um, we've got. Um, um, Landscape irrigation is very big here, mm -hmm. and uh, landscape irrigation covers quite um, you know wide range of applications: lawns, residential uh, playgrounds, hotel compounds, mm -hmm. schools, institutions, and open parks and golf courses. Mm -hmm. we, we've got quite some wide coverage. Um, so overhead sprinklers, rain guards, we do center pivots for really large scale mm -hmm. um, applications. Mm -hmm. So um, rain hose, which again is a, a very you know close simulation to both drip and sprinkling. Mm -hmm. The rain hose is a perforated uh, pipe uh, with perforations, lesser holes mm -hmm. on the top surface. So it gives you very fine jets, and it covers the entire ground just like uh, sprinklers, but it's low pressure. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, in uh, areas that are not water scarce, rain hose could be a very good option. So what I'm getting from you is. The mode of irrigation that you want to um, employ or you want to use is slightly dependent on, like you said something about water. How yes. if you don't have scarcity of water, yeah. then you could do overhead. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Of course, the resource is available. Correct. And the type of crop, the water resource. If you've got enough water, and uh, we we have to uh, be aware of the fact that the, the water resources has been dwindling, has been really, really. Um, becoming a challenge the world over mm -hmm. and more and more we always encourage farmers whether you have it in plenty or you have an ocean mm -hmm. outside your house mm -hmm. you need to be um, sensitive to the fact that it is not um, your resource alone yeah. it is shared yes, cut resource. so use as little as possible mm -hmm. as most efficiently as possible so that you let it's a river let the farmers downstream also benefit mm -hmm. so the water available but the crop but the soil type you know, you've got heavy soils or light soils that really determines what uh, what kind of irrigation system you want to use. Of late, and I want to tell you whether you're doing avocado farming, of late there's been this growth, pun intended, of people getting into avocado farming, half avocado farming. And you mentioned about, I think, the pattern dripper. Mm -hmm. What someone who's watching us, they don't know, I want to irrigate my avocado orchard. Um, what would be the best mode of irrigation? Uh -huh. that I should use okay. for, for fruit trees, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for fruit trees, remember, uh, we always say the canopy of the plant, um, let's say the rooting structure mm -hmm. under the tree mm -hmm. is, replicate, is replicating, trying to replicate the canopy. So you've got a huge canopy, you've got the same, similar kind of network of roots under the tree. Mm -hmm. So you need to irrigate as large an area as possible. Mm -hmm. And under tree sprinkler would be really, really great for avocados. Okay, but remember, I'm not an expert in avocados, mm -hmm. but um, you know, under tree sprinklers require that you irrigate um, as big an area under the canopy mm -hmm. as possible. Mm -hmm. I have actually successfully um, used drip irrigation, you know, drip, mm -hmm. drip, drip line mm -hmm. under coffee, mm -hmm. and it works perfectly. You can also use drip okay. because um, under the entire canopy, you've got a uh, rooting network. There's something we call a partial root zone irrigation. Okay. You don't have to irrigate the entire root mass mm -hmm. for you to get optimal results. That's under tree. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a big topic, but okay. just to explain it in very brief, uh, very briefly, mm -hmm. um, the root, partial root mass irrigation allows you to irrigate at least 20% of the root mass to get the same benefits as when you're irrigating the entire 
uh, root mass. Why? Sweep some water first. Guys, uh, this point, we're not going to take a break, we're going to sit some water. And as I sip some water, I want you to take a note, a notebook and a pen. Hope you're writing notes because it's going to get deep after this. You said something 20% root mass. Rewind selected, rewind it logo. Explain that again. Uh, I'll take it up again. Um, so, it, it's research, out of research that's been conducted um, by several institutions mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, sponsored by FAO. Mm -hmm. Partial root mass irrigation mm -hmm. um, uh, is a method of water saving. You know, it's a saving water saving method that allows you to get part of the root mass uh, to get nearly the same results as irrigating the entire you know root mass under the plant, mm -hmm. as in simulating rainfall. So the minimum um, root mass you should cover and supply sufficient with the water is about minimum twenty percent, and that allows root development. Root hairs are the ones that are responsible for water and nutrient uptake mm -hmm. by the plant. That allows um, optimal development of the, the irrigated root mass so that um, the uh, fully develop, developed uh, root mass uh, can actually sufficiently uh, nourish the mm -hmm. plant. Um, it's, like I said, it's, it's, um, it's quite some science. I, I would not wonder. It's, it's, it's deep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm hearing that and I'm like, this, mm -hmm. is, this is brilliant for, for mangoes also. Yeah, I know. And, and, you imagine as in the, just the way that you're saying that uh, the, the canopy and the, and the roots, because as I say, you create a whole basin yeah. around it, yeah? Yeah, and then when you're irrigating, you, you pour a whole drum uh, of water. You, you like leave your, your hose pipe there and you can't do other <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Wow. By the time as you're, you're coming back eh, and you're hearing that all you need to do is about 20%, the amount of water savings fast mm -hmm. is. That's humongous. Yeah. I'm listening to him speak, I'm wondering. Because <laughs> those are things I think we knew we were never taught, or if they were taught, we never listened. Uh, how does it make you feel now when you get this kind of information as a farmer, as a young farmer? Uh, do you think this is information that is needed, and in what form should we consume it? Should we have TikTok videos like, you know, what do you think? Oh, thank God, you guys need to be on TikTok and we're doing some of these videos and informing people because 30 seconds is long enough to relay that information and then now from there somebody else will come in and decide this is now uh, I want to find out more and that's how they yeah uh -huh. they get this but it's 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 brilliant information and it is something that we need mm -hmm. we desperately need because I know that I'm not an avocado for a farmer I think I have the three avocado trees mm -hmm. the rest are mangoes mm -hmm. yeah but this is information that we need definitely definitely I think that for not only for, mm -hmm. because I know that uh, there's some people who won't grow fruit trees, they will grow other other sorts of trees. Yes. Yeah. For Even shed trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or wood trees. Yeah. yeah, wood trees. The same same information is the same same thing that they require. And if we're trying to save on on water for everybody, then that's the way to go. Yeah. True. Youth and agriculture. Um, when people come to your farm, what are the age groups? What are like the ages that are coming to your farm? What are the questions are they asking you? Are you finding more women interested in agriculture, more young women? And are you mentoring them? What are you doing in that space? Um, people first just come and get a mix. Uh, the wall factor. <laughs> the wall factor. Mm -hmm. Then the, the question is, is there money in farming? Mm -hmm. Yeah, where's the money in farming? Um, what is the best product to use? Yeah. What is the best uh, system to use? Um, why, why is my soil like this and not like uh, like uh, like the other? Yeah. So, is it uh, how much time do I need to be spending on the farm? You know, okay. those kind of things. You tell people like uh, helicopter farming. Uh, it's, it's not a plan. Try and. Uh, get there, be there, understand what, you, what you're doing, understand what you want to grow, yeah? Because when you come to, when I come to uh, talk to you and tell you that um, I want to grow, um, what do I say? And to grow chili, yeah? You'll advise me on what kind of uh, drip line that I require. That's what right. not, as Nadine, you're not just going there to guess. 
and then I tell you that uh, because I need to rotate, how how best do I incorporate uh, the 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 drip lines? Yeah. 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 So that he is mm -hmm. as a material mm -hmm. buying something just for the sake. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. You talked about Chile and uh, <coughs> you brought some PTSD, and P stands for poverty. <laughs> So when I was in this uh, chili farming in uh, Sagana, we were a group of we were one, two, we three, four people, not four of us, uh, in Sagana, mm -hmm. talking about irrigation, my goodness. So we got water from a river, and uh, we were, of course, irrigating in that uh, big house. But we would send money, because you can't drive all the way every day to irrigate in Sagana, mm -hmm. money for petrol. That time, a little of petrol was going, I think, at one or five, one or six, or hundred shillings. That's about hundred shillings. <clears throat> so you look at your bill at the end of the week or at the end of the month, you're wondering, wait, are these guys drinking petrol for breakfast? Because it, it, you can't be educated with all this money, it's not possible. But then you guys are doing solar. Please <laughs> talk yeah. to us. Because it's a perception <coughs> that it's easier or it's faster to pump using this petrol pump. And it's okay if that's what you have right now. But what is the shift, the cost implication if you go solar and you get it by solar? Ah, perfect. I, I spoke about pay go solutions. Yes. And I, I said this is one of the newest segments where we're trying to incorporate as many products as possible for farmers to live up and pay you know, over time and to make it more accessible, more affordable. Mm -hmm. We even got partners, you know, we, we're trying to bring in partners so that, um, you know, we, we can work with, you know, a larger group of financials and other service providers mm -hmm. so that, uh, you know, farmers reap more benefits out of our products. And, and uh, one of the big products that we're pushing into Pago is, is solar, solar pumping. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've got a wide range of uh, solar pumps that are already available mm -hmm. on offer. Um, the drip kits as well, okay. and, and other you know solutions. Mm -hmm. But big on the map is, is solar pumping and, and drip kits mm -hmm. uh, for a start. And um, I am not an expert in solar pumping, but I'll tell you um, the trend, current trends, and uh, you know the way to go now is, is, is solar mm -hmm. because uh, we've seen energy, you know, the, the petroleum uh, product. Um, so no, prices are, are soaring. They are, they are they're getting out of reach of not even the ordinary pocket. Yes. Uh, so they're quite prohibitive. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure, you know, you're seeing that even the trends with the rest of the world, you know, the solar power or battery operated mm -hmm. motor vehicles yeah. and motorcycles. Mm -hmm. So we cannot run away from it uh, to make irrigation and to make agriculture sustainable and more lucrative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to call green energy. This is the way to go. Let me tell you, when, when I was fueling, I think, 500 shillings every day, my little family could become more petrol. Mm -hmm. time I think it was at 115, 17, there about. Right now, it's at about, I think, 186, 187. How much would I be spending today? But the minute, oh, hey, hey, I had a spanner. I learned how to even work on the machine in case it has issues, then it would smoke. I became a technician by me. But the minute I got <laughs> yes, because as man, so we are my full time. But the minute I got that solar education system, yes. So people came to my farm, yes. And I told them, oh, right now we, we are pumping water. They're like, I to ski my because they expected to hear noise, brrr, brrr, something. No, we, we we are clean here, clean energy. It's silent, it's on vibrate mode. You compare it. They didn't believe it till I showed them the the submersible pump. Tell us how, if I don't have um, a borehole or a well, how else can I harness, say, irrigation water? And, and can I use a submersible pump in that? And how do I direct it to my farm? So let's, let's um, say whether you're pumping from a pond or even a river or a borehole or a shallow well, you can actually use um, um, a solar pump. Okay. You know, it can be a surface pump, it can be a submersible pump, it can be a deep well pump. What's the, what's the difference first? Konamuto Aju is submersible, so, uh, those so, things you mentioned. So, so, a submersible pump, we've got two parts in a pump. Mm -hmm. There's the, um, the, the, the pump unit and there's a uh, motor. Mm -hmm. So, with a submersible pump, 
the pump units, which we call the wet end, mm -hmm. and the motor are both immersive motor. Okay. So they go into the wet. Okay. So the, even the motor is submersible. Mm -hmm. yeah, whether it's in a, it's in a or a well or, mm -hmm. or in a river, you, you just put the whole pump underwater and it works. That's how it's meant to work. A surface pump that does go, don't, doesn't go into the water because the level of insulation of the motor is, is different from a submersible motor. So there are, there are these two main different types. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say, whatever the application, whatever the pumping application is, uh, we are able to give you any kind of pump. Now forget the you know, fuel pumps mm -hmm. or engine pumps. We still have them because there are other areas where you can't use them, where you can't use them. You know, they, they, they've got other applications and they are very popular in some regions. Mm -hmm. um, so we are able to give you um, any size of pump, any type of pump for any application. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you can solarize um, motors as big as 55 kilowatts, 75 kilowatts, mm -hmm. any size of motor. Mm -hmm. um, and that's massive, that's for a huge, mm -hmm. you know, um, that can supply nearly a whole constituency. constituency. <laughs> yeah. So, so we are talking about you know solarized solutions for all our products. Mm -hmm. You know, pumping you know, solutions. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to ask: Is there a way that um, you already have? Uh, okay, fine. I already have like uh, the, the the solar. Yeah. Is there a way to just uh, upgrade it or increase the panels and then now swap out and get a a bigger pump? Yes, it, it's possible. Um, all we need to do is we we'll, we'll look at uh, what size of pump you have, and um, of course, in sizing of uh, solar systems, there's always the, um, the additional load factor um, because of uh, you know weather like uh, now when it, when it's not um, when you don't have good radiation, you need to factor in um, some uh, some safety um, to get you optimal pumping. Outputs even when it's cloudy. Um, I'm not saying it will always give you 100%, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, when we look at it, we'll be able to give you um, a solution based on what you have, and if it's possible to add on it to optimize and you know uh, make your outputs better, we can we can advise. Mm -hmm. So it's possible to upgrade. Mm -hmm. Hello, let me ask. Yes. Do you have anything in your panels? In? The rain cleans. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was told some birds came and made their nest under my the solar panel. Yeah. So yes, it is important. Uh, Wangu has been very, very key in uh, you know advising us what to do, because uh, now if it's covered with dust, and then of course the yeah. light intensity will get through, then we not pump properly. So it's just basic maintenance. I think uh, yeah, we got a horse pipe and just clean it a little bit. Um, talking about maintenance. Huh? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm harvesting rainwater, uh, so water goes into a pond, and I had done catfish the previous season, uh, but I've started seeing some tadpoles, because uh, of course there will be a few frogs that will jump in, a few tadpoles, and either the eggs, somehow they are sucked into the system, because I opened the filter. And I saw something that was looking like a tadpole leg or something, whatever, whatever. Um, so, how do we maintain our drip lines so that they are not uh, clogged? Mm -hmm. Mine could be probably just that um, my water is open, I mean, the, the pond is open, mm -hmm. but someone could be having uh, water from a pond, which is her line. Yeah. Uh, uh, talk to us about mm -hmm. that. So, I'll talk about the you know, various different types of treatment options. And um, first and foremost, like what you have mm -hmm. is a screen filter. Mm -hmm. Now, screen takes care of a screen filter or a mesh filter, or even a disc filter mm -hmm. will take care of uh, um, the suspended solids. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, you know, turbidity, mm -hmm. water, you know, anything turbid, mm -hmm. we recommend uh, mechanical uh, water uh, filtration. That's either a screen filter or a disc filter, mm -hmm. and sometimes we've got very fine Silt, we go for media filters, okay. which we also offer. Mm -hmm. So there are these three main types. It's either a, a mesh or a disc or a media filter mm -hmm. when it comes to handling irrigation uh, water. But then it goes beyond that for subsurface water, mm -hmm. boil water, where we're talking about TDS, total dissolved solids. Okay. Um, you talk of sodium, you talk of um, calcium carbonates, you talk of magnesium sulfate, this is salinity. Sodium, which has 
really adverse effects on um, the plants and on the soil structure, um, calcium carbonate, so total hardness combined with magnesium sulfate and the effect, it can be bad, bad compared to even the physical mm -hmm. properties that we're trying to mitigate. Okay. So uh, when it comes to the dissolved solids, so we got solutions for that. Okay. We can, um, you know, um, give you a reverse osmosis. That is ultimately mm -hmm. what you will need to filter out um, the solids, mm -hmm. the molecules. Now this is molecular filtration. Okay. So you filter out um, dissolved solids, dissolved you know elements in your water, because when you use them in your irrigation uh, water, they can be very detrimental both to the soil and to the plant performance. And a lot of farmers are grappling with those challenges right now and they don't know what is eating them. But what I always advise farmers is um, before you, you know, get into irrigation, you need to know the quality of the water that you're using. You need to know what is in your water mm -hmm. so that you can um, carry out remedial action before applying it because it's going to affect your performance. And end of the day, it's going to affect you, affect you affect your venture. So uh, we've got a lab. Um, we have a fully accredited lab mm -hmm. uh, where we do all the water analysis, both for irrigation and for um, human consumption. And I always encourage: do not use water that you know you're not aware about. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the lab, and it's not mm -hmm. expensive. You know, a sample uh, can cost you anything between a thousand to a few thousand shillings, depending mm -hmm. on what element you're talking. Because mm -hmm. I, I saw someone's um, farm that was in Kitengela. Yeah. They had done some uh, capsicums, mm -hmm. and at the emitter, there was some whitish substance ah. around there. Yeah. Is that what you're discussing about? That's salinity. That's salinity. And what it does is it causes scaling. It builds up in your plumbing systems, in your drip lines, and eventually clogs them. Mm -hmm. Now there's no way to remedy against the clogged, um, you know, drip line or emitters mm -hmm. from salinity, because it's build up of scale. That whitish substance is mm -hmm. salts. And uh, when they build up and eventually clog the water parts, it becomes very difficult. You really just have to replace your entire drip lines. Yeah, sometimes you have to do that. And so there are various other methods. You know, we advise farmers because we know some of these treatment methods, um, you know, systems are, are expensive. Okay. You can treat half of your water if it is inevitably, um, you know, if it, if it inevitably has to be treated. You, you can treat half of it and blend with some raw water mm. or mix your raw water with some fresh water from the rains. Okay. Really advise um, water harvesting mm. and fresh water from the rain mm. as much as possible. Um, if salt, salty water or saline water is the only source you have, um, use a lot of manure because manure can condition your soil um, and, and find a way to blend it with fresh water because when you dilute when you dilute your salinity, mm -hmm. then you know the clogging effect is um, is slowed down. Mm -hmm. um, again, use of fresh water when it's available. You know that uh, leaches your accumulated salts mm -hmm. in the soil um, to some extent and gives it some relief. But there, there are so many other remedies that you know we can advise farmers on, okay. and um, they work. They they kind of you know because we have to work with what we have. Yeah. And uh, part of what we have, uh, which is very common now, is bad water. Mm. And we need to find ways to utilize that. Mm. Um, is the water an indication? I don't know. From our well. From our well. From our well. Yeah. So you, you so your well sorted out. Mm. See what I mean? That's it. That's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yes. <It was> like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's why there's there's an advantage. People uh, people are checking it eh, where, mm -hmm. where where your water where your water source is from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you if it's from a river, which river? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially now uh, around uh, Nairobi, mm -hmm. anybody who's doing a Nairobi river, mm -hmm. Afi river, Mbagati river, mm -hmm. those ones, you know, like. It's bad, bad. Yeah. And that's true. That's why heavy metals and all that. Yes. Yeah. Another big challenge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. English is just getting to the system exactly. and our rivers yeah. and our soil. Carcinogenic, you know, and yes. and ending up on your plate. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I keep on asking people, do you really know where your food is coming from? That's a lot of cadmium, you know, from factories, lithium and what else? Um, lead. I lead. I was going yeah. for lead, yes. Lead, yes. Cadmium, that's all in one group mm -hmm. on the periodic table. Those mm -hmm. are called 
carcinogenic. Mm. And, and that's what we're getting from um, lots of um, rivers around towns because of industrial discharge in the rivers. And that is harmful. Do you know, if, if we continue from here, our minds are going to blow up. So, so we, since we don't want them to blow up, you're going to end this episode. Um, I hope you've been writing notes. Uh, bookmark this. I want you to please do me a favor and share it across all your platforms. Tell your friends, let people know that there's something amazing happening in this podcast. It's, it's a lot of learning. I want you to go back to your farm and look at your operations, look at your drill kit. Uh, is there salinity? Are you cleaning your water filter? Uh, are you doing a raised bed? I mean, there's so many things I could talk about what I've learned today. But today, I just want to thank, uh, thank uh, Wambua. Thank you so, so much for those insights. I mean, my mind is blown already. Thank you for coming, uh, for coming through. Um, and I was wanted to milk this opportunity to call you Mokami. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so, so much. You get a joke on your way home. Um, Yashikuru Sana, thank you so, so much. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and share it with your friends and let them know that drip is life.